Uh, hey everyone, this is Edwin Overa from Edwin Overa Dance and Creative Services. And in this particular video, I get an a, a interview, I get an honor, it's an honor to introduce uh, Gavin Robbins. Gavin is a world-renowned movement artist who's based out of Sydney, Australia. Some of his uh, work, past projects, have been, uh, my goodness, the one of the part choreographer in the opening ceremony of the uh, 2000 Sydney, Australia Olympics, alongside Nigel Jamison. Um, he also was choreographer, uh, I believe, in movement for the King Kong the Musical, which was a big hit in Australia uh, about a year ago. Um, and he's also a former member of the Legs on the Wall uh, Aerial Arts Company, which they do physical theater, circus arts. Um, I believe they call you, AKA, the man with the iron neck, or something like that. <laughs> Wow, right. That's, that's, a, that's another project that we're looking to work on. Right and um, uh, uh, let's see, uh, last thing is you were uh, recently nominated with an award, which would be equivalent to like the Tony Award here in America, called the, um, the Helpman Award. And it was for your, um, what was it called? It was uh, Outstanding Theatrical Achievement for Movement and Direction in King Kong. Uh, simply amazing. And uh, Gavin and I, we met alongside with my twin brother Roberto during the audition process of uh, How to Train Your Dragon. I, How to Train Your Dragon arena show that was about, I think like, oh my goodness, maybe five years ago or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I was personally uh, captivated by the way, first of all, your presence and how you're able to fill the space and, 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 through, your, and through your directions and to the people who were auditioning in that process and how you really brought uh, a lot of stuff out of every single one of them. Whether they made it or whether they didn't, it was, I was taken back. First of all, that was the first time I've ever heard of the title, a movement artist. I'd never heard a movement artist ever. It didn't exist in my vocabulary. Maybe because, one, I was still new to the um, uh, performing arts world, even though I performed with Palabalus. Uh, that, that title, movement, suit performer, I'd never heard of it up until meeting you. So, well, here we go, and we have Gavin right in front of me. <laughs> Um, so let's go with the first question, uh, which is, I'm always uh, interested in how people got into the movement arts. So when you were a child, what were some early um, uh, signs, whether your mom and dad noticed that, you know, you're like, oh, this child is a mover? Yeah, well, look, I mean, uh, in Australia, it's, I suppose it's a really common thing in Australia for many young people to be involved in sport. We're very, you know, I suppose similar to the States, where very... First question is, you know, um, growing up, what were some early signs that your parents noticed, or even yourself, that you were going to be a mover? Yeah, so I suppose uh, in Australia, like the States, where sport is crazy, and I was a young boy who was very much attracted to sports and, and grew up playing uh, a variety of sports, but one in particular, I, I represented uh, Queensland in cricket, and I uh, was very about cricketer and footballer, and uh, I was on the cusp of becoming a professional cricketer, so all of my life was about cricket and playing sport, uh, but then I, I was also attracted to theatre, and mm. I decided to do a, a Bachelor of Arts in, in theatre, and, and, and I was still playing cricket, but while I was at university, I, I typically fell in love with a, a young ballet dancer, and I was really taken by her because I would I would be able to engage her body as mm -hmm. an athlete, but she's able to express far more than a sports person was. And I was really struggling with that as a sports person. I was feeling that there was a limitation to the way that people were perceiving life from my perspective, and there wasn't a poetry or an expression available in sport as there was in dance. And I thought at that point, I, I, I'm going to do what she's doing. I'm going to become a physical performer, yeah. but I want to be able to bridge dance and acting and acrobatics. And, and I had a vision of, I suppose in some ways, what I'm doing now, where people weren't just limited to one dimension on stage, mm -hmm. that they could hold people on their bodies like a circus artist, but maybe wear a three high circus would leave off an aerial performance would exist on top of that. Yeah. And, we could maybe fill the stage with song and dance and aerial work and, 
uh, a wider expressionistic form. But still, I wanted, as a young man, I wanted to see people exploding with athleticism on stage. So I think sport uh, and falling in love with the ballet dancer is the answer. That's wonderful. Yeah, my brother and I, we were also active in sports. In America, we did American football and, and uh, track and cross country and powerlifting, a lot of weightlifting. And, and we both noticed that that was like you, um, you can, being big and, you know, fit is one thing, but being able to express yourself on many different platforms is, is much more, I guess, well-rounded, you know. And, right. and you've, you've, you've seen plenty of uh, artists where they're incredibly massive in size, yet equally as impressive with um, articulating their, their voice or their body, you know. So. That's right. And I think that's the, you know, in some ways it harks back to a renaissance that, you know, in the sense that you want to have that roundedness and, you know, you want to be able to have that strength but also the vulnerability and the dexterity and um, mm. in some ways that's what, I, that's what I'm training in Harvest now here at the National Institute of Dramatic Art is trying to find that range, uh, that expressive range, you know, which, uh, which we need, you need as an artist if you want to stay in work, I think. And you're the head of that institute, am I correct, that, that schooling? I'm the head of movement here at, at NIDA. So we have, it's a, a place where Kate Blanchett, Mel Gibson, Jim Davison, um, Sam Worthington, it's, it's, it's probably it's our premier uh, act training uh, institute. It would, be, it would be kind of like equipment to like a Juilliard or something like that then. That's right. Yeah. yeah. It's like the Juilliard or the Rada of London. It, it, it has that. And we have wonderful facilities here. We, uh, also, I now train the, uh, all of the actors put harnesses on. They learn to run up a wall and they learn to uh, fly in the space. They, they do motion capture. Yeah, uh, that's amazing. Proper tree training and mask training and combat uh, acrobatics. So there's a, it's a pretty dynamic program in terms of uh, training training the artists. Yeah. Just as you're describing it, it um, the, because I don't know if you know this, but Roberto and I both have a military background and. Um, it would be equivalent to like somebody going through special forces, you know, um, right. but, but in the arts, uh, it's like your artistic warriors, but at the same time you can do the physicality, you also have the outward expression. Um, wonderful. Right. Uh, so at, when you were, when you were, uh, this is going kind of older, like so you're, you're going into college and stuff, um, what, was, what was the one form of movement, if you can narrow it down, that really just caught your attention? I know you were inspired by the ballet dancer, but what was the, the that one thing you're like, wow, I'm pretty good at doing this, and you excelled in it. Yeah. Well, look, I, I was really drawn to the work of Lloyd Newsom from DD8. Oh, DD8, yeah. And I was yeah. watching, uh, you know, Dead Dreams and Monochrome Men, an early production of his, where there was this two, a duet between two men, and they were able to take each other's bodies into space, and it was dynamic contact improvisation, mm. ultimately, but it was moving emotional expression where I felt there was there wasn't really a distinction between the emotion and the physical uh, choice. Whereas with ballet, somewhat you're imprisoned I think, by the style, the form. You know, it somehow dictates work. Whereas with Lloyd Newsom, there was a sense that the acting and the dance became one. Yeah, you know, oops, I was gonna say. Um, uh, first of all, I just got. Just take it back quickly because I saw this sign come up saying internet was funny. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but with DV8, uh, I was introduced to that company from my teacher Long, um, who trained us in, in, in modern. Um, and he's like, you need to take a look at that company because they're so raw as far as their energy and their essence. And and the one video that he showed me was with a woman and a man, and he had they were like plastered on the wall and they were doing this beautiful duet. And they kept I don't know if you've probably seen that one. It's must have been in the late 80s, early 90s. I think it was called Fish or something like that. Well, I think it's Strange Fish. Strange Fish. Wow, that was beautiful. Um, let's see. Fizz, uh, do, 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 do. Okay, this we're moving on. We're talking about, this is, again, looking at the past. But um, Since you are a very physical person and the stuff that you do <laughs> demands a lot on the body, um, what are some past injuries that you've dealt with um, and how did you overcome them? Well, I mean, I... And I suppose my performance career, you know, I, I joined Legs on the Wall. I, I saw a production of Legs on the Wall in 94 when I was actually a student here mm -hmm. at the National Institute of Dramatic Art. And I was studying under the man who's 
just over my yeah over shoulder. your shoulder. <laughs> Keith Bain, uh, he was the kind of the, the first movement artist of Australia rock. His uh, he, uh, strictly ballroom was his story. This movie uh, mm-hmm. by Baz Luhrmann. He was a competitive ballroom dancer who broke the rules of of uh, ballroom. And but he was far, much more than that. He was a beautiful movement teacher who was working on set with actors uh, and on television and film to coach them from anything from period drama to you know how to fall downstairs and, and things like that. So he was a good coach. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was studying under him. And when I went to, uh, I saw a production of Legs on the Wall called All of Me. And I suppose that was an earth shattering moment because I saw brilliant acrobatics. Again, a bit like DBA, where there was a sense that the acrobatic form was connected to an acting choice or a gestural choice, mm-hmm. and everything that was chosen to be on stage had to be there. There was nothing superfluous. And I ended up joining that company and becoming one of the principal members. And I, I performed there from '94 through to the opening ceremony of the Olympics. And, and I did a bit of work, work as a performer after that. But I, I had probably a seven year span where I was performing intensely and I was training every day. And I suppose I went to India uh, in 99. And I was always doing yoga, but uh, in the yoga form, of Ashtanga Yoga has been something that has, I suppose, been the way that I've dealt with uh, the, a lot of the acrobatic strain that I've yeah. had on my body. And so I was technically sometimes lifting three people in the air and, and doing uh, also you know, quite, quite dynamic jumping and things like that. But the yoga was something that obviously was about my consciousness and my breath, mm-hmm. but it really helped to balance my body and to stretch my body and to strengthen. And um, in, in some ways, I suppose I'm prefacing my answer with that because I didn't have actually ever suffered a major injury. I've had spurs on my shoulders and I've had some repetitive strain injuries and mm-hmm. you know, sometimes my ribs would go out, out oh, and, man. and I'd need to go to an osteo to kind of be worked back Line. And, and that kind of thing. But I didn't ever break a bone or tear a muscle off or you know, have to have a, uh, you know, I've had arthroscopies on my knees, which is pretty common yeah. uh, from from the impact work, but um, I pretty well maintained my body to a point through yoga and through discipline, and then I became a choreographer right after the 2000 Olympics because I, I, I started to work on television and film, and I really felt a natural transition from being an artist and a performer mm-hmm. to wanting to be on the other side and start to work creatively to manifest more vision and train up artists. So in some ways, I, maybe I escaped. <laughs> <laughs> you escaped the injuries. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, there are some people I know who have danced with like companies like Momix, and you know they've been there for 20 years, and they have lots of injuries. Because again, it's repetitive motion. And as we both know, when you're doing large-scale productions, your body's being um, pushed to such a high level of physical demand and mental strain um, but it's not just it's not just for you know three months. You could be doing that same project, that same piece of choreography for up to five years, and and it's the repetitive blunt trauma that really takes a toll on on the joints, on your body, yourself, you know, relationships. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. No, no, it's intense, you know, and that's why the idea of yoga or a holistic preparation for me became more and more important because it wasn't just about the physical; it was about the emotional and about the repetition and how do you balance mm-hmm. something which is ultimately imbalanced? You know, how, how do you work without tension when you're actually creating something that is communicating tension and drama? And all drama is about tension. But, uh, but being uh, relaxed in that tension. Yeah. How do you it's, it's acting ultimately? You don't really <laughs> want to act the tension. You don't want to kind of end up being, being a, oh. <laughs> and, and But the, 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 the thing with that is... Um, I mean, you've seen it multiple times through the auditions, even through performances, is that uh, people perform sometimes at a, at a tense state, and they do it, you know, every day, and they're, they're projecting it, but they're projecting it with, with uh, their muscles clenched and that clenched stomachs, you know. That takes its toll on the body, that's for sure. Um, yeah, you're not going to last. Yeah, you won't last, and if you do, you have a, a small amount of time. You have your small heyday. Um, this is going back on the, on the uh, Olympics, because... 
I've been fascinated with the, with opening ceremonies. Um, some of it is again because of just meeting you and then hearing, uh, reading your bio and all the other stuff. I've looked into a gentleman named Peter Minshaw, who did opening ceremonies. He's a guy from like Trinidad, and he did the um, what was it? The Spain oh, Spain Olympics, I think it was Barcelona or something. Um, yeah, and I'm just fascinated. Like, first of all, you know, how did you get the how did you get the gig? Like, who? How did you meet with with uh, with Nigel? How did you make friends? You know. Acquaintances with him and yeah, friendship. Cool. Hey, Gavin. I, again, I do apologize for this. I I didn't have any problems. I was sitting here for like close to two, three hours, and I've never had. I'm gonna move quickly to another space in the room and see what happens, and I'll call you right back. Okay. Yep. Can you hear me? That's okay. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Can you hear me now, Gavin? Uh, it, it may be mine as well, but I. I don't know. Okay. 